Hi there! Are you looking for information about treating scleroderma? If so, then you're at the right place. Just before we dive into treatment options, please make sure you have seen the previous videos on scleroderma to get a general understanding of the disease. As you may recall, scleroderma is a disease involving the hardening of the skin and the connective tissue, which may occur locally or throughout the body. This mainly occurs due to overproduction of a structural protein known as collagen. We will now discuss some treatment and management options for scleroderma. Unfortunately, there is still no cure for the underlying problem, which is the overproduction of collagen. But don't worry, there are treatment and management options for relieving the symptoms associated with scleroderma and limiting the damage. The treatment will depend on the particular problem that you may have. First, let's talk about skin care and some suggested preventative treatments. These include using oil-based creams and lotions after bathing, applying sunscreen, avoiding hot baths and showers, using humidifiers, avoiding harsh soap, and doing exercise regularly. In addition to the skin problem, another complication associated with scleroderma is Raynaud's phenomenon. Raynaud's phenomenon is likely to occur in more than 90% of patients with scleroderma. Raynaud's phenomenon is characterized by the constriction of blood vessels, most commonly in the fingers and toes, but can also occur at other sites including tongue, nose, ear, and nipples. For more information, please watch our previous video called Raynaud's Phenomenon. In terms of managing Raynaud's phenomenon, Calcium channel blockers such as nifedipine can be used as vasodilators. They relax the blood vessels which are constricting and blocking the blood flow. This is done by preventing calcium from entering the cells which is necessary to contract, thus preventing contraction. It is believed that immune activation is an important aspect of scleroderma. This led researchers to look into substances that suppress the immune system Hence, they are called immunosuppressants. Rapamycin is an example of an immunosuppressant. It blocks the function of T-cells, which release substances that promote inflammation. This prevents inflammation in the body. Rapamycin can also prevent the synthesis of collagen in fibroblasts. And, as mentioned in previous videos, collagen deposition is the main cause of scleroderma. To respond to inflammation, corticosteroids and NSAIDs may also be prescribed. Corticosteroids inhibit inflammatory genes involved in chronic inflammation. These genes normally upregulate proteins causing inflammation. However, due to inhibition of the inflammatory genes by corticosteroids, the proteins involved in inflammation are not produced at high levels. NSAIDs, on the other hand, function by inhibiting hormone-like substances which promote inflammation. They also prevent neutrophils, which are immune cells, from releasing inflammation-producing products. Thus, inhibiting both reduces inflammation. Hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.